Well, folks, the unthinkable is happening. Even rich people are stopping to spend money now at this point in time. I'm sure you have brand new data out here that's very important to understand about what's going on in the economy out there. Now, we were lied to because we were told that all this inflation stuff, it's only affecting the poor. It's only affecting the middle class. But don't worry, the wealthy folks are going to be just fine. They're going to keep spending. No, no problems for them, right? But what we're starting to find out now through this data I'm about to show you is rich people are getting hit and get hit significantly and they're stopping spending money in a pretty significant way. And if you look at all this data I'm about to show you in this video, you're going to see, oh my gosh, even the rich folks are, are pulling way back on their spending and their expenditures. And this has to be said right at the beginning of this video. The fact is the only reason rich folks can, can be rich, right? And, and rich folks to, my, to me, in my opinion, right, is that anybody that makes more than $400,000 a year or anybody that has a net worth in the millions, okay? The only reason that's possible is because of the middle class. The middle class runs the whole show. And the way I'll put it to you like this, and, I, and I've always said this since I started my channel in 2016, right? The middle class always has run the whole show. Who do you think is spending all the money out there, right? Google, their whole business is built on ads. Why does Google make, make so much money off ads? Because the middle class uses Google and they click on those ads and sometimes they buy products, right? And so that's why Google, Google makes so much money because of the middle class. Who do you think is buying all the iPhones and iPads out there and all the services and all those things? You think it's just rich people? No, it's the middle class. Same thing with Facebook, very similar business model to Google. Who do you think's buying all the, the Amazon packages? And who do you think's using all the services that are supported on AWS, Amazon Web Services? It's all the middle class. Who do you think's the, the main Microsoft users? All folks that are in the middle class. So this whole economic show is all run by the middle class. So if you hurt the middle class, you hurt the rich in a massive way. The best thing for rich people is the middle class to be strong, spending money, doing well for themselves. The worst thing for rich folks is a middle class to get hit significantly because when the middle class stops buying as many iPhones, stops buying as many houses, stops buying as many Amazon packages, clicking on as many ads, that's when rich folks start to get hit in a significant way. And boy, we have the data pouring in now that I'm about to show you guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you every single person that's subscribed to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you as always. And uh, if you're looking to support the channel and support my content, do so on Patreon. There will be pinned comment down there. And you also get access to the stocks I'm buying in there as well, okay? Nordstrom. Nordstrom shares sink after retailer posts weak holiday sales and slashes guidance. Nordstrom said weak sales and a ton of markdowns hurt its results during the holiday season. The retailer said it had to mark down merchandise more than expected to clear through excess inventory. Like Macy's, a department store said shoppers did not spend as freely as they have in past holiday seasons. Now, the important thing to remember is Nordstrom. Their, ma their main department stores. That's pretty much the highest end department stores out there. And they really cater to the top 10% of income earners. Like who's Nordstrom, the department stores, who's their core customers? The top 10% of the wealthy, top 10% of income earners. Those folks, right? Business professionals that have great jobs. Folks that are just higher net worth in general, right? That's Nordstrom's pure like, like business model, right? In terms of their department stores. But they also have a business that's called Nordstrom Rack that serves the middle class. Now, the important thing to notice here is net sales decreased 1.7% for its main department stores, which means, once again, the rich are starting to get hit. And think about this. Inflation, inflation, we're talking, you know, has been up, what, 7, 8, 9% this year? So this is really, in my opinion, like a negative 9 or negative 10% negative number in terms of net sales. That's the reality if you want to do a inflation adjusted, right? in terms of its Nordstrom Rack business, down 7.6%. So obviously this shows you the, the middle class is getting hit more significantly than the rich folks, but the bottom line is rich folks are pulling back big time as well, right? And this, this number, if you were to inf you do an inflation adjustment in there, I mean, we're really talking like down 14, down 15, down 16% year over year. <gasps> Man, things start getting really, really tough when you pull away all that stimulus money, doesn't it? When the Fed stops uh, pouring all that money out there and the government stops pouring all that money out there, man, things start getting real, real, real fast, right? And everybody says they want that, but do they really want it? Oh boy, okay. No, by the way, guess what? Guess what Nordstrom's going to have to do? If their sales are down, 
they're going to have to let go of employees or cut hours in a significant way. Also means the, the folks that work at Nordstrom that maybe get commissions, if they're folks like that, right, they're not going to be making as much money. <gasps> Back to the economy. Toll Brothers, the, the highest end home builder that's a public company that we can see their numbers, okay, the highest end. What did they report in their last quarter? By the way, wait till the next quarter. It's going to be even worse than this past quarter. <laughs> this was the quarter that ended in October 31st. Wait till the G quarter that ends January 31st. It's going to be even worse, much worse, okay? What did they report? A disaster. And remember, the folks that buy Toll Brothers homes are those folks that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year of income or have net worth usually in the millions and have some of the best credit scores, right? And look what's going on. Contracts down 60% year over year dollar amount down 56% year over year. Their backlog's drying up rapidly, already down 21%. Wait to see where their backlog's at over the next couple quarters. We're, we could be looking at 30, 40, 50% backlog down. When these numbers, it's just a game of catch up to get to that backlog essentially. This is getting ugly and it's getting ugly fast. And the bottom line is wealthier folks are saying, I'm not going to buy a new home right now. I'm not going to buy a new home anytime soon. I don't need a new Toll Brothers home right now. What did we see from RH's earnings, which is the highest end furniture company pretty much out there, right? What did RH tell us? Uh, their business is getting bad and getting bad fast. By the way, wait till next quarter. It's going to be even worse. And the next quarter is probably going to be even worse, okay? What did they show us? Q3 gap net revenues came in at $869 million versus over a billion. So their, their revenues are down big. Their gross margins are starting to shrink. Their operating margins are starting to shrink. Their net income is down in an epic way. Look at gap net income, 99 million versus 184 million. <gasps> I might not be the best at math, but I think that's about a 50% decrease roughly. Look at diluted EPS, 378 versus 588. <gasps> so what this shows you is rich folks are like, I don't really need to go buy a new couch right now. I don't need to go buy a new dining table. I don't need as many chairs as Jeremy. Like I just don't need those things, right? That's what they're saying. They're pulling back in a major, major way. Watch LVMH's, which they own Louis Vuitton and a bunch of other high-end brands. Watch their earnings that come out. I would almost guarantee you Louis Vuitton is going to have a tough next one to two years. And their numbers will start to show the weakness in their business. I'm telling you, I, I, you know, we have, a, we, have, we have, I don't know, we might have the most Louis Vuitton stores here in Vegas than anywhere in the world. Like, seriously, like, the more I think about it, I'm like, I think we might have more Louis Vuitton stores here than, I don't want to say than Los Angeles, but gosh, we might have more than anywhere. And I go by these stores, they're not busy like they were busy. These stores were a zoo. A year ago, two years ago, Louis Vuitton, there were lines to get in that place. People couldn't wait to spend two, $3,000 on a new bag. It's not like that now. You can go right in there and speak to as many sales associates as possible. Tiffany, all those companies, tough, 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 okay? Next up here, have you seen prices of Rolex and Patex? Oh, this is my favorite thing, okay? This has been the folks that have been saying, oh, you need to be buying watches. Watches are great investments. It makes so much money over time, okay? All right. We'll see about that. The most popular Rolex models saw their prices falling 21% since the peak of last April. Patek, Patek uh, most popular, is now down 19%. It will get worse before it gets better. The bottom line is, why do, why do these Rolexes and these Pateks, why did they appreciate for a while, right? There's only one reason. I'll tell you the only reason those watches went up in value. It's because... The world was making a lot more rich people, and those rich people were getting a lot more rich, right? Well, if the Fed's working against everything, then rich folks, there's going to be less and less rich folks, right? And also, that's going to mean the rich folks are less and less wealthy. Myself and every single other high, higher net worth person I know, net worth has gone down over the past year, not up, down. I don't know one person that's a high net worth individual around me personally. I know quite a few now. I don't know anybody that, that, oh, wow, they're worth more this year than they were at the same time last year. Every single one, right? And so guess what, 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 what happens? Watch prices start falling, right? Because you've got people that are always willing to sell them, but you've got rich folks that aren't as rich. And if they are looking to put money, now it's like, well, do I buy a new watch or do I buy stocks? Do I buy a new watch or do I buy a house? Because now there's a lot of assets out there, right? And so you're seeing these watch prices start to fall off a cliff. It'll get worse before it gets better. You know another thing? Exotic cars. Exotic cars were appreciating ridiculous, okay? McLarens, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, all these sorts of cars. I mean, they were going to the moon. It was incredible. It was like you, you buy one of these cars and you make money. 
make money. I mean, that was not traditionally a way, right? Maybe a few specific like Ferrari models or something like that, like, you know, real collectible kinds. They'd keep them in perfect condition. Maybe it could appreciate over time. But it wasn't normal that you buy a supercar, drive it, and make money. That was not a normal thing, but it became a thing for a little while there, right? Well, now those prices are starting to come back to reality. I just, I just was like interested. So I typed in like just in Vegas, how many Lamborghinis are for sale? There's 22 Lamborghinis for sale in Vegas right now. Now, I can tell you, a year ago at this time, there probably were maybe two to seven Lamborghinis for sale in the Vegas area, okay? 22 Lamborghinis in just Vegas, that's a lot. That's a lot of inventory for Lamborghinis. A lot of inventory, okay? And what I'm starting to see is people are, are you know, cutting price significantly, right? This guy wants to sell his 2004 Lamborghini for less than 100 grand. I wouldn't be surprised if you could get that for maybe 95, 92,000, maybe 89,000. This person's looking to sell their 2007 with 23,000 miles on it for 119. Don't be surprised if you could negotiate with him and get it down to like 105, maybe down to like 102, something like that, right? This person is selling a 2016 Huracan. Uh, for less than 200 grand here. This person selling a, a 2015 Lamborghini with 15,000 miles on it, 223. I bet you any money if I went down there and told them, you know, 199, take it or leave it, they would sell it to me for 199 right now. This one, less than 5,000 miles on this one. This might as well be brand new, right? 2015 Huracan 234. Once again, I bet you I went down there, I said 199, take it or leave it, they would take that baby like, like nobody's business right now, right? So this is something that's playing out now. All these supercars are starting to come down in price because rich people aren't spending as much on these, right? And it's interesting if you go to some of these forums around some of these cars, right? Like McLaren, they were already starting to freak out. The McLaren squad, they were starting to freak out back in July. They were starting to freak out back in July. And what concerns me is, I, you know, if you go to some of these different forums of these folks that own McLarens and Lamborghinis and things like that, is how much a lot of these folks are concerned about pricing, dropping, dropping, dropping. And, and I'm like, these folks are very confused. It, you should not own an exotic car, in my personal opinion, if you're worried about the price dropping. But these folks are freaking out. These McLaren folks, Ferrari folks, uh, Lamborghini folks, and it will get much worse over this next year, essentially. But they're already like freaking out over prices starting to drop. And I'm like, what are you doing here, right? Like, if you're going to spend stupid money on a car, which stupid money is anything over $100,000, and especially if you're spending over $200,000, which many of these exotics can go for, right? There's no reason that you should be watching the price like that. Like, like what are you doing? Because then, you know what these folks have treated these exotic cars like? They've treated them like investments. Folks that make investments keep an eye on it, and they're like, oh, man, this is dropping in price and those sorts of things, right? Exotic cars should not be treated as an investment. But the problem is people have made watches in exotic cars into investment vehicles now. Investment vehicles. And I'm like, there's a rude awakening coming, man. The Fed <laughs> took away the, the fun, the fungible. bowl. You guys don't even like understand how much the, the prices can really drop on these things. If you think stocks can drop 50%, if not over 50%, and you think a McLaren can, or a Lambo can, or a Ferrari can, or these other exotic cars, or these watches, oh, you got another thing coming for you. Absolutely they can, okay? Now, I went to a resort called La, La Casa de la Playa, or whatever, right, in Mexico. It was amazing. This place was amazing, okay? 63 rooms, boutique hotel. I can tell you, okay? Now, first off, the rooms there are like 2,000 and up a night. I can tell you, that place was uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, the first couple days we got in, I don't even know if it was half full. I literally don't even know if it was half full. I wouldn't be surprised if there were only like 20 or 30 rooms actually occupied. During the weekend, I think it got close to full. I think they probably had maybe 50 rooms occupied. This is my guess. Probably 50 of the 63 rooms occupied over the weekend. It was definitely seen busier. But I'm telling you, when I was there on like Wednesday and Thursday, it was like a ghost town, and which I love. You know me, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a complete introvert, right? So I was swimming in this massive pool all by myself. I was loving life, man. This was like the greatest thing ever. And like that's one of those things that you're looking at, and it's like why aren't, why aren't people going there, right, in terms of like why isn't that place full? It's because rich people are pulling back. They're going to pull back on vacations and experiences and things like that. And, you know, these folks that maybe used to take two, three, four vacations are maybe only going to take one or two vacations over this next year, right? And they're going to have less disposable income to spend. And that's something I definitely witnessed. And the driver even told us at one point, he told us they weren't, they weren't at max capacity. And that was over the weekend when he told us. So even over the weekend, they weren't at max capacity. <gasps> you know, that's one of those things that you just kind of like you keep an eye on these things, right? 
I think Tesla is one of the most telling stories of this. Tesla really caters to the upper end of the middle class, right? And even to a lot of the wealthy. Even though this, many of their cars aren't necessarily priced like 200000 or 300000 or anything like that, right? I mean, the most expensive vehicle is probably what the Plaid that's priced at, what, 140 I think, 130 140 and that's the most expensive. But the bottom line is Tesla really caters to the upper middle class in, in, in those sorts of things, right? Why did Tesla drop price? Tesla had to drop price because they're not seeing that sort of demand. Like, there's no way Elon and the executive team, if they had insane demand, right, would be like, oh, let's drop price a bunch and hurt our margins. There's no way. They did that because they're seeing a demand dry up, right? And so they dropped price significantly. It's going to hurt all the other auto manufacturers in a massive way in Tesla's demand going back up because now a lot more people in the middle class can afford the vehicles, right, at like a bigger, a bigger amount than could afford it just literally a week or two ago, right, before the tax credit kicks in. And before, obviously, the price decreased there. So that's significant. But that goes to show you the weakness that's happening out there where folks with money just don't have as much money. And they're being hit as well, right? And so it's always kind of frustrated me. And I think a lot of this has to do with politicians and their narratives and things like that. They run up this game of, like, it's the middle class versus the rich. When, in reality, these two are so dependent upon each other, I don't even think folks understand how much. And the bottom line is, if the rich folks aren't spending money, right, then restaurants get a lot less busy, right? Less people buying the, the Rolex watch who's getting commission off that and the store owner's making money off that and the person that's building the watch, right? And if they're not buying the new Lamborghini, then that's way less people that they, Lamborghini needs to hire to build the cars. And what about all the people that have to transport the car around that make money off that, right? And what about the, 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 the sales guy that gets commission off that, right? And so there's so many people that make money off of rich people, right? And the hotels and the resorts and all these different things. And if those folks are hurt significantly, they're not going to spend as much money, which means the middle class starts getting hours cut. Remember the Nordstrom thing we just talked about? If Nordstrom's not as busy, they're going to hire less. They're going to even consider firing some. And people that do work there might get much less hours and make less commissions if they get commissions, right? So these two are in sync. And if the middle class is hurt significantly, then the rich can't do as well. Because again, then guess what? Assets don't increase like they do. If the middle class is hurt, that's less people that can make it into the rich class, right? So these, these two are so dependent, it's not even funny. Don't ever let people divide these two because they are one. And without one, the other is going down. And it's going down like the Titanic, okay? I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thank you so much. Also, thank you everybody that supports on Patreon. Also, if you want to say hello to me, say hello on Instagram. That will be linked in the description area. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.